I'm in a fantasy mood today, so I want to build a floating pirate city. Let's see if we can get the basic layout finished. So I kind of want to build this platform with lots of little houses on top and also places to dock boats so they can kind of go in and out of the town by boat and go do their pirate business and come back home. And then there's this path going all the way around, but I also want to add some grassy bits. So it kind of looks like they have gardens even on their floating platform. And let's see if we can make this part a little rocky. And then the rest is just going to be on a foundation. Okay, looking way more piratey. But I think what's really going to make or break this build is some good boats. So we do have these, which are functional. So I like that. Because I do like the idea of them actually using the boats to like get to the floating island, you know? Let's add some doors and windows, shall we? So in my mind, this area in the front is kind of a farm with a little fisher's hut to the side so they can be like self-sustaining. So this would be the barn where they can keep some animals. So then I think we should have an arch instead. Okay, let's put some plants in our tiny bits of greens around the place. So I don't actually want too much color because I think it's going to take away from our dark and gloomy vibe we kind of got going on. So these are pretty good. I also like the low lying daisies. And I think we would want like a stump to sit on. You know, looking a little bit homemade. A little rustic. Do you think a skylight would be too advanced for pirate society? No, I think that looks okay. So that means we could turn this into sort of like a greenhouse. Usually I go for like really bright ceiling lights, but I think for this build exclusively yellow moody lighting is exactly what we need. The overlap between wrench and pirate build is quite big. So that's our barn, gardening space, farm area kind of finished. Lots of spaces for plants and stuff. All right, let's see what fishing supplies we have. Let's add some fish traps around. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's actually go light this place up. like a street lamp here and there could actually really make this look more like a town yeah i think that really helped oh that's really cute like tiny little balconies okay more barrels you know what would also be nice if we could put some lights on the barrels back to nighttime mode i like the idea of there being like big crates and stuff on some of these boat things because that's where they're like unloading all of their loot. Did I miss anything specifically piratey? Oh, see, that's what we needed. Okay, I'm going to replace some of these boats with a big pirate ship. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. I mean, I'll have to think of something for the bottom, but we'll figure that out eventually. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it looks a little silly, actually. Some captains can park really well and just like be right next to the rocks. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Some kind of round wood thing. Yeah, I think it looks best if we just kind of like hide the worst corners. Some rocks and this weird tree thing. Just don't question it too much. This is how all pirate ships look. They just have square bottoms. Well, this is not the functional boat anyway. That's these. <laughs> this is just a cool boat that I think think you should be able to actually get on if i don't forget to you know give them a way to get on this platform okay she can get on the platform can she get on the boat yes that's so cool i don't know if she she'll be able to get up here oh she can okay that's really cool act like a pirate act like a pirate act like a pirate amazing i love it Uh oh. So I think that's most of the exterior done. So now let's start working on some interiors. So I was thinking you can kind of tell from the sign that this would be a sort of bar kind of situation. I mean, it's where the big pirate ship comes in. So you can immediately go have a drink and then upstairs will be an actual living space. So let's start with that. What's the most piratey bar? Honestly, probably the horse ranch one. Okay, so I have this idea. I kind of really want the barrels to be the tables and I think I can do that. Oh, we could even like place it like this. So let's place a bunch of those. Paintings of their pirate adventures and a map of the world. Okay, I think that's a pretty cool bar. I'm really happy with that. And then I placed a door and a ladder to the bar owner's private space, I guess their home. So I'm imagining like an old married couple that have run this bar for most of their lives. 
Like they were both born into pirate families, but they kind of quickly figured out that pirating wasn't for them. But you know, they still wanted to be part of the pirate world. So they started this bar and they wanted it to be like a second home for whoever came across here on their pirating adventures. And they've had to put up more and more shelves throughout the years because they're so well loved by the community that people just keep bringing back like little treasures or fun things that they put on their journey and they want to keep all of it. One of them is a really big painter and she makes lots of paintings of like ocean views and pirate ships. So a lot of the painting that you see around the town are actually her paintings. So pretty much has everything they need. A bed, comfy seats, painting studio, little kitchen, dining table, lots of stuff that they get from all of their customers and a tiny little bathroom. So the captain lives in the biggest house on the island. She is a young adult, which makes her one of the youngest captains ever. But people really respect her because she's very good at what she does. And she's also very good to the people around her, her crew, everybody on the island. Her second in command lives next door they are very very close friends and have been since they were very young like they basically learned to sail together they would go on expeditions go places they probably shouldn't have gone since a very young age and they've also kind of been flirting a little bit in the last couple of years but they're both not ready to admit that so it's kind of up in the air right now so the current captain is not the one who built this island the previous captain did and he was very very different he definitely liked the riches and the gold and all of the fancy stuff that came with pirating and the current captain hasn't really touched the house since so it's a much much more fancy house there's a little bit and pieces of her personality here and there but she doesn't really have a knack for interior design not that she really likes the current state of the home but you know she's busy doing other things but that does make this definitely the most fancy home so the decor is mostly hers while the wallpaper and the flooring and just the big furniture pieces are just the previous captain and she really likes nature so there's a lot of plants it's one of the reasons she wanted to become a pirate in the first place just to be out on the sea exploring and then the attic is the only place that she really did transform it was previously mostly just a storage place but she now goes in there to plan all of their next adventures so this is kind of the space where you would find her most often so she just sits here all night just like reading as many books about the world and places she wants to visit and this is kind of her personal space. So that is the captain's house. So as I said, the second in command lives next door. He's really passionate about cooking. So he basically cooks every meal on the ship, but whenever they're in town, the whole island just shows up to eat dinner. So the entire ground floor is pretty much dedicated to cooking. It's a pretty small kitchen, but he's kind of used to it like that anyway. It's not like he has a lot more space on the ship. And they did have to add in a second table just so everybody could fit. And it's still pretty tight. And there's definitely still not a lot of space in here, but it fits. And then up the stairs, this is actual private living quarters, although it's pretty small. And there are definitely plants in here, courtesy of the captain. I don't think he had a choice. So that's the second in command, you know, living living space, I guess. <laughs> so there are two farmers in town who obviously live on the farm. They didn't necessarily arrive to the town by their own free will. They were actually taken against their will by another pirate crew. There are often visiting pirates in town, so that wasn't really anything new. But the town doesn't really tolerate any crime that harms arms other people in any sort of way. So when they found out, the captain actually stepped in and freed the farmers who weren't farmers at that point. She did offer to take them back to their hometown, but turns out they weren't really having a great life there anyway. So they decided to stay and got assigned these two really old buildings. And it wasn't like the town was expecting anything of them, but they just decided to turn it into a farm. So one of the barns became like a greenhouse, chicken coop sort of situation. And the other one they turned into their home. And they really did turn it into a proper farm with lots of space to grow their own produce, even a nectar station. And they regularly catch fish as well. So they basically taught themselves to sail and got all the seeds they needed from neighboring islands and even managed to get some chickens into town. Don't ask me how they did it. And before the town really had to rely on trade with the visiting pirates or, you know, whatever the captain managed to bring back home, but it would always have been very difficult. So they're definitely very grateful to the two farmers because now they can just rely on whatever food they produce. They're also a couple, by the way, if you're wondering why there's only one double bed, that's why. Which means the living space for our farmers is also completely done. And again, they kind of have everything they need except the fully functioning kitchen, but that doesn't really matter because they all eat 
at the second in command's house anyway. <laughs> so then we only have one house left. It's a pretty big house. It only has one floor, but it kind of goes across the entire width of the floating island. And this house kind of has a tragic story because it has a single mom with her very, very, very recently born infants living in it and unfortunately our husband didn't come home from sea he left on his own so nobody really knows what happens to him but it's presumed that he either got lost or his boat didn't make it whatever the reason is he didn't come home so now it's a single mom and her infants living in this house luckily the town really does help out a lot especially the bartenders they are basically honorary grandparents to this child so everybody comes over everybody helps but this is kind of the only family home in this place so we actually have an infant room in this one so i actually made quite a big mistake while decorating this house specifically in the floor plan you see i created this like really cozy cute living space a living room a really nice kitchen i tried to incorporate a lot more color in this build as well especially because you know they have an infant running around so i just wanted it to look cheerful while still being in theme with the rest of the builds so i was essentially done and i started doing the final room which was the nursery super happy with the kitchen super happy with the living room all going great when i realized i did not include a bathroom which you know in a different build might have not been that big of a problem because i could have just like squeezed it in there i made quite small bathrooms in all of these houses anyway but this is a house with an infant which means they really really need a bath as well so i couldn't just make the tiniest possible bathroom ever so i ended up expending the entire house i made these little like nooks for no other reason than just making the build slightly more interesting so i just removed those made the house slightly bigger and then i was able to squeeze in a bathroom in between the kitchen and the living room because at one point i figured i needed to remove the entire living room which would have been really sad because that was such a cozy and cute corner so i figured it out we got there in the end I'm actually quite happy with this build. Like it turned out so cute and cozy. I feel like this one might be my favorite. So at some point while building this house, I kind of got obsessed with the idea of this build being off the grid. So I started looking at the lot challenges and I added both off the grid and simple living. And then I also added manual laundry systems. So I just wanted to make sure that it was possible at the very least to play this off the grid so i wanted to make sure that i replaced everything with off the grid appliances and also added some like water gathering and electricity gathering appliances things magic <laughs> So I built my floating pirate town on a 50 by 50 lot in Sulani. It ended up costing a total of 228,000 simoleons, which is less than I expected. It has six bedrooms, five bathrooms, three fully functioning kitchens and two semi-functioning kitchens, a farm, a bar, a nursery, the ability to play this off grid if you wanted the extra challenge space for five couples or single sims and one infants so if you own for rent you can also turn this into five separate households and that concludes the floating pirate city 